It's that time of year again. International Motorsports Weekend is coming up. May 25th and 26th will be the weekend with the most action, best racing and coolest cars of the year. From the free headlining acts of Formula 1, IndyCar and NASCAR to local GT and touring car races. It's going to be a packed two days. Still a little lost in all the excitement? Don't worry, I'm here to explain all the races that will take place, at what time they start and where to watch them. Without any further ado, let's get into it. We start on the 25th of May 2024 with the annual 24 hour race. Last year we had the 24 hours of Nürburgring during Motorsports Weekend, which is one of the most acclaimed biggest 24 hour races in the world basically. And although this year we don't have that, we do have the 24 hours of Fuji. It's a lot more obscure, it's a lot smaller scale, it's not even hosted by like Super GT or something. It's hosted by Super Tech which I'm not really sure what it is. I'm not gonna claim to be an expert on this series, but what I do know is that it's multi-class racing. GT3s are the highest class. There's a bunch of touring cars and GT4s around. It's basically the 24 hours of Nürburgring, but then in Japan. Uh, there's not a lot of international drivers competing, but it is a spectacle of racing, of course, because a 24 hour race always is. Doesn't matter who's competing. The 24 hours of Fuji will start at 12 a.m. Eastern time and last until 12 a.m. Eastern time. So it's a true night owl race, but it is really quite an interesting event. I mean, it's got a lot of cars. It's 24 hours. It's on one of the most beautiful tracks in the world. And of course, you may not know the drivers now, but maybe you can get acquainted to them. Maybe even get some favorites going. So yeah, definitely recommend it. The race will be streamed live for free on YouTube on the Fuji Speedway YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. It will be broadcast in English if I'm correct. Although there might be a Japanese stream too. I'm not sure. These sources seem to keep changing. And honestly, I'm not a native Japanese speaker. I don't know what all of them say. There will be no scoreboard or anything during the live broadcast, but there will be English commentary so you will be able to understand what they say. So yeah, definitely a recommended watch, especially if you want to see a Toyota Yaris race a Mercedes AMG GT3 Evo. On to the next series. Now, while the 24 hours of Fuji are ongoing on that Saturday, you can also choose to switch in the middle of the race and watch Germany instead for the DTM. The DTM is of course Germany's premier GT3 series at this point, premier domestic GT3 series I might have to add, and they will be taking to the Lausitzring. The Lausitzring is an oval track in Germany, it's similar to Pocono. But unlike NASCAR, these cars will of course be running the road course because they're GT3s, they're not exactly made for oval racing. Um, in terms of drivers, DTM has a lot of star power. I mean, you got the Van der Linde brothers, you got Jack Aitken there. You know, you got quite some big names. The DTM race at Lausitzring will last from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on that same Saturday, 25th of May. It will be available to view on the SpeedSport 1 network, which is apparently a TV network in the US that broadcasts this live. I've never heard of it, but go ahead. And otherwise, if you do have a VPN, set it to Germany and you can watch it on YouTube for free. There will hopefully be quite some action. There will be a lot of GT3 cars taking to the track that day. So, I mean, it's the first race. These drivers are not as experienced with the track yet. There's got to be some chaos. So if you want to, of course, tune in. And that was all the action on that Saturday. We move on to May 26th, 2024, which is, of course, the Sunday and thus kind of the main race day. And it's going to be a very early start for Americans who want to catch every race because we're going to be starting with Formula E at Shanghai. Now with Shanghai of course being in China, there's a lot of time zone nonsense going on there. So you'll be starting the race at 3.30 a.m. And I definitely understand that a lot of Americans won't be watching because of that, because that's a ridiculously early time. But I must say, Formula E is getting better and better every day. The series is improving, it is listening to the fans. The next generation of car is built on feedback from drivers and fans. So, you know, there's a lot to look forward to in that series and if you are willing to give up that amount of sleep or you're just not from a country with that much of a time zone difference I do suggest you check it out because it is gonna be probably an exciting race you got Nick Cassidy and Pascal Verlein of course they're the top two drivers this season although it's basically just a top one with luck but there might still be some excitement there Formula E will be broadcast on Roku which is Again, an American TV channel that I've personally never heard of. 
but there you go. And in the majority of Europe, the race is just fully watchable on Eurosport. After that, you have time for a two hour power nap Americans, because it's right back to action at 6.15 Eastern time, where the BTCC or British Touring Car Championship will be taken to the track at Stetterton. It's not the biggest or most glamorous series, but BDCC is genuinely underrated. It's beating and begging, it's touring car racing as it should be. You know, it's it's just fantastic and I really, really suggest you tune into this. The BTCC field of course mainly consists of smaller sedans and hatchbacks like the BMW 3 Series, the uh, Honda Civic, the Ford Focus and the Toyota Corolla. These cars are quite easy to throw around and beat and bang and as I said it's classic touring car racing and this series provides that. So definitely tune in. In terms of drivers, the current title battle looks to be between Ashley Sutton, Colin Turkington and Tom Ingram, but of course we're not even halfway through the season yet so there's a lot of points to still be gained all around the board. The race will last from 6.15 to 6.45 am. It will be broadcast for the British people on ITV Sport and for the rest of the world it will be streamed live on TikTok. That's right, these races are fully streamed, available free on TikTok of all platforms, not YouTube, not even Twitch, just TikTok. It's an interesting choice, but yeah, on the official ITV Sports TikTok, you can watch this full race. And I highly recommend you do because, well, touring car racing is awesome. Always has been, always will be. And then after a short pause, it's back to the Lausitz ring for the second race of the DTM. This is, of course, the Sunday race, the main event. So definitely tune in from that one. 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. It will be on Speedsport 1 again and it will be on YouTube with your VPN set to Germany. That DTM race is interrupted unfortunately for the last half hour or so and unfortunately for DTM I have to say that that's the better race that's interrupting it. British GT comes flying in with their Donington event which will take place from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and well it's better for a myriad of reasons. First of all, there's a lot more cars in the British GT field. It's a full field of GT3s and GT4s. There's brands there that aren't in DTM. And plus, you've technically already seen DTM, right? On a serious note, if you do have to choose and you aren't quite sure, well, British GT is probably going to be the more competitive race. And plus, if that makes it any easier, British GT will be the easiest to stream. Whereas for TTM you either need a VPN set to Germany or to watch some TV channel no one knows. The British GT race at Donington is just free on YouTube on the GT World channel. Again, link in the description. It's free, there's no ads, it's worldwide. I heavily implore you to tune in and watch that race because it is amazing. And you know, it's completely without any hassle. You can just watch it. In terms of drivers and cars to watch, British GT tends to favor mid-engine cars, the current standings leaders are a McLaren and a Lamborghini, the Garage 59 and Barwell Motorsport cars respectively, although the Mercedes cars tend to do pretty well around there too. British manufacturers in general seem to be doing a lot better in British GT than they are doing internationally. Ah, <coughs> McLaren, <coughs> Sorry, something stuck in my throat. In terms of bigger international drivers, Maximilian Gott, the 2021 DTM World Champion is a big one. Raffaello Marcello is competing, who is arguably one of, if not the best GT3 drivers currently available. And in terms of more local talent, I mean, you got the Garage 59 cars, the McLarens, which are really fast, especially the Sean Balfi, which I'm 100% mispronouncing, and Adam Smalley car, which is currently leading the standard. And you got the two Barwell Lamborghinis, both fully staffed with British drivers. You know, you got Ricky and Rob Collard, got Alex Martin and Sandy Mitchell. These two cars are also really fast, so keep an eye on those if you want to support local talent. And otherwise, you know, you got Marcello, you got Goods, you got some big names in there too. So yeah, for everyone, there's someone to root for. And if you're not tuning into VAT Thunder or care about that last half hour DTM, there's real Mark Marquez, I know that guy. Uh, in terms of teams, Ducati seems to be the fastest bike. I mean, I'm not an expert, so please correct me in the comments. So yeah, these guys will definitely put on an entertaining show. If you want to watch it, go ahead. You know, MotoGP, it's big, so I really get it if you do. i personally watch it if I wasn't too busy with Donington. And after MotoGP, we're finally getting to the big first main event. Starting just two hours before Donington ends, and funnily enough, ending before Donington ends. 
because that's how race lengths work, Formula One will be taken to the track in Monaco. Now of course, this is the biggest race on the Formula One schedule. Is it necessarily the most exciting? Not really, but it's the one with the most hype, the most press and the most fame if you win. Like this is a genuine big event for Formula One. And honestly, even though I'm not the biggest Formula One fan anymore, I definitely used to be these days, not really that much anymore, but I still watch. Um, you know, I'd still recommend at least tuning in because this is one of the big races, you know. It is the first of today's headliners, so at least it will work really well as an opener to that Sunday, especially to Americans because this race starts at 9 a.m. Eastern time and that's a lot more reasonable of a time to get up than, you know, 6.15 like the BTCC race or 3 a.m. like the Formula E race. In terms of drivers to watch out for, I mean, you got Max Verstappen of course, dominance until the point of boredom, that's basically what we've had these last few seasons. And, you know, before that with Mercedes, but right now with Max Verstappen. And, uh, you know, he's definitely the guy to look out for, even here in Monaco. Sergio Perez, his teammate, has won at Monaco. You have the two Ferraris of Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, who look decently fast. I mean, Leclerc hasn't got his first win of the season yet, but he could. Same for Perez. Sainz has already won. Another winner this year has been Lando Norris. Maybe he could be interesting to watch, although Lando Norris... It's quite inconsistent. Sometimes he runs P1, P2, and sometimes he runs like P18. So uh, those are the drivers to look out for. Now, as I said, you know, it's not going to be the most spectacular race, especially with the other two headliners being way more insane. But, you know, at least give it a try. That's what I would say. And if you really, really don't want to tune into F1 or British GT, the BTCC will hold its second race at Stetterton from 9.25 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. So right in the middle of both races. You can even catch Monaco's finish or, you know, the entire rest of the Donington race. It's kind of an interesting move for the British Touring Car Championship to just go up against Formula One like that. I mean, that is the biggest motorsport in the world in terms of viewers that you're trying to compete with, which I personally wouldn't have done. But you know, there's only so many hours you can drive, so I get it. After that, we have a three hour break in Motorsports Day. There will probably still be some exciting races here and there that you can watch on like local YouTube live streams or you can play racing games in this period, but none of the big main events are holding any competition. Then after those three hours, it's time for the big one. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's time for the third and final BTCC standard and race. You know, I love BTCC, but it's not particularly the big series. Yet, as I said before, especially this one where there's no scheduling conflicts, absolutely go and watch. 1210 to 1240 on the ITV TikTok page or on ITV Sports if you're a Brit. You know, definitely go and watch it. It's BTCC. It's awesome. I mean, what's there to say? And then finally, an hour after the checkered flag at Snetterton flies, another green flag will rise. And this time it is the big one the Indy 500. This is of course the second of the headliners and the first of the two American headliners and I mean what's there even to say? It's the greatest spectacle in racing that's literally in the tagline. It's a great race, it's around a historic track. You know it's just amazing to witness. It's literally the biggest sporting event of the year in terms of amount of people that actually show up to the track. It's only beaten by the Tour de France cycle race which you know is through the entirety of France. So of course there's millions of people there because they fit there. But in terms of like actual sporting places the Indianapolis 500 is the absolute biggest of the year. In terms of drivers to look for I mean Penske just basically dominated qualifying. All three cars on the front row are there. She got Scott McLaughlin, Will Power, and Joseph Newgarden. Scott McLaughlin, who, mind you, set a new track record. Other interesting drivers are Kyle Larson, the NASCAR driver who's pulling double duty, but more on that later. And for the international crowd, I mean, we got Renus VK, we got Pedro Award, we got Felix Rosenqvist, we got Takuma Sato. There's drivers from around the world in this event. So even if you're not American, you're gonna find someone to root for. Now the Indy 500 is a very long race. It's not the longest race of Motorsports Weekend, but it is a very long race. It's from 1.45 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. And that's just estimated, you know, a lot can happen. So it's the longest race we've had so far. It won't be anymore when we get to the next race. But it is a long event, so uh, be prepared for that. And the cars you're seeing on this track are the fastest open wheelers, the fastest single seaters in the world. And I don't mean that lightly, I mean that Scott McLaughlin on a small lap drove an average speed across four laps 
of 234 and 220 miles an hour. That's 376 kilometers per hour. Ridiculous speeds. Formula One doesn't even reach that. So if you're looking for real speed, it's in these cars. Absolutely phenomenal racing that you're gonna get to see. Definitely tune in. I mean, this is the first race since a while that doesn't have scheduling conflicts. So, you know, there's nothing to lose. Tune into that race. And while the dust settles over Indianapolis, we go to the final race of the weekend. Going out in style, it's NASCAR with the Coca-Cola 600. It's the longest non-endurance race of motorsports weekend, clocking it at a grueling four hours. But I mean, it's all worth it because it genuinely is such a fantastic race every year. I've yet to see a Coca-Cola 600 fail to deliver. The race lasts for 600 miles, as implied in the name, around Charlotte Motor Speedway, a one and a half mile oval. 39 NASCAR cars, some in special American patriotic liveries to celebrate Memorial Day, will take to the track to see who will win NASCAR's longest race. And if I'm going to be honest, even though I was raving about British GT at Donington earlier, if there's only one race on this entire weekend you can watch, make it this one. It's such a spectacle of an event, it's so big, it's so fast, it's, it's amazing, like that's all I have to say. The Coca-Cola 600 will start at 6pm and last until 10pm. In terms of drivers to watch out for, I'd say take a look at the Fords. They had a very slow start this season, but they're building up some more. They've won some races recently and Charlotte is kind of a four playground if you look at the historic results. Another driver to look forward for is, as I said, Kyle Larson. He's doing the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 all in the same day. He's going to be running 1100 miles in the span of a few hours. I mean, that's insane, right? Now, he's definitely a fast driver in both series. I mean, from what we've seen, this is being recorded before the Indy 500 has started, so I don't know his race pace, but his qualifying pace was really good. And in NASCAR, he's just always been quite a fast driver. So he's definitely someone to look out for during the race. Other fast cars to watch out for could be the Toyotas of Danny Hamlin and Ty Gibbs. They've definitely been quite fast this season, but overall, I'd say look at a Ford to take the win here. For international fans, there's Shane Van Gisbergen who made the move to NASCAR last year. He's running the Junior Series, but he's making a few Cup Series appearances, including the Coca-Cola 600. He'll be driving the 16 car. The Coca-Cola 600 really combines all the best elements of Motorsports Weekend into one race. I mean, we have the spectacle and this show of the Indy 500 and the Monaco GP. We have the production looking cars from British GT. We have the length of the Fuji 24 hours, although not really, but I mean, it is a very long race. So overall, you have everything combined into one event. With the current generation of NASCAR car, we've had some really great racing on these mile and a half tracks like Charlotte Motor Speedway, while even having some photo finishes, more than we've ever seen before in a single season. So that definitely could happen on NASCAR's biggest race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So definitely tune in. And those are all the races you could watch tomorrow and the day after. I know there are some smaller races and some races in the smaller context that I've missed, but I really tried to go for only the big ones here. Which of the races will you be watching? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, it would help a lot. I somehow gained quite a lot of subscribers from uh, my recent uh, Cars video, so thank you guys for that. Uh, there will definitely be a sequel on the way, so uh, be on the lookout. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!